I want us to know that if you want to really partner with God, if you want to build with God, there are two things you must know. Are you there? Because if you don't know these two things, you'll just be religious and you'll be building with the devil. If you truly want to build with God, the first thing is you must discern one, what the devil is doing. Two, you must discern what God is doing. Why must you know what the devil is doing? You will need to know what the devil is doing so that you will know what to fight. Now, why will I discern what God is doing? I will need to discern what God is doing so that I will know what to what? Support. Are you with me? One of the greatest agenda of the devil in this season is to do all he can to silence the voice of truth. Are you there? And what the devil will be able to achieve if that is done is that false wood will increase. Are you there? But the truth will be silenced. That's why I do not believe that's my conviction. And if you are in the spirit, you can judge what I'm saying. I do not believe that you are doing the right thing if you are part of this move and you are not sharing the messages on your... I don't believe you are doing the right thing. If all of us here that we are on Facebook, if we take it upon ourselves and we share the link... For example, now today, maybe God helps us and we are able to do about five teachings and you share all the five links on your status, on your timeline on Facebook. Somebody will be blessed. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's the way to show that you are part of those that is advancing the voice of truth. So you hear, you keep it to yourself, you see it online, you take your eyes off it. That's not, that's witchcraft. When you see the truth and you don't publish it, you are already partnering with the devil indirectly. What happened last week Sunday shows that if we all take our stand, oh, the truth will, will spread. I'm not joking. It will spread. So please, I'm saying this and thank God we are alive so that people online too who believe they are part of what we are doing, they can join. Once you see the message out and you have listened and it blesses you, you have every right to share it. The truth must be published. The truth must be what? Must be published. So if you are not publishing it, you are joining hands with the devil to silence the voice of what? Of truth. So let's go to the teacher. I want to believe that you are all obedient children and then you do the needful. So it, you can, because of that action, go to your Facebook just because of, that's why I go to Facebook. What am I doing there? Because I just want to share the messages. That's all. There, you see, there are people that, um, let me tell you something. You see, true impact cannot be measured in time. There are some people you have blessed that you will never know until you get to heaven. There are people that you are blessing now. Are you there? That all that you, all that God is using to bless them through you is just your act of Publishing the truth. Are you there? That's it. Now look at, take for, take for instance, the, the, the words that I preach now. Am I the owner of the words? So, physically speaking, preaching is simply getting what God is saying and publishing, and publishing it. That's preaching. So it therefore means that anytime you find the truth and you publish it, you are actually doing what? You are preaching. Are you with me? All right, let's go to the teaching. God's ability. Praise the Lord. Oh, the act of what? The act of prayer. So the first teaching was God's ability. And now we are moving to the second one, which is the act of prayer. Praise the Lord. Before we go into the Bible, I want us to understand that um, prayer is an act 
And prayer is also an heart. Are you there? So there is the act of prayer and there is the heart of prayer. So we're going to look at the two, then we'll go to the scriptures. Praise the Lord. So, prayer as an act, number one, shows that prayer is an action. Are you there? Prayer is an action word. So, if you are engaging in praying, if you are engaging in prayer, are you there? If you are praying, you are actually performing what? An action. Are you with me? Another thing to note is that when we say go and act it, when you say uh, somebody is acting, what does it mean? It means that the person is, whatever the person is doing is according to his script. Are you with me? Huh? So prayer as an act shows that prayer is supposed to be done according to a pattern because there's a script for that thing you are doing, for that action. Are you with me? Are you with me? Mm. There is a script which you are acting. See, anytime you are praying, the reason people pray are missed is because they are acting what is not written in that script. They don't know that prayer is supposed to be done to specific. They don't know. They think that's why it will be wrong for you to, to pray anyhow. Because that thing you are doing is an act. It has already been written. You, whatever you want to do must be according to that which what is written. Are you getting what I'm saying? Huh? Hmm. Prayer as an heart now involves one, skill. What do I call it? Skill. There's something we call skill. That are, you can be skillful in prayers. It's possible. Now, the skill you develop in prayers is resting on your relationship with God. Are you there? Your experience, which is which will come from your relationship with God. Are you there? That is what we form. What your skill. Take take for instance. Have you had this experience before? You, you were in a meeting and people have prayed. There has been this continuous session of prayer and then you, you knew that the environment is hot. And then the next person to minister now did something, you know, now begin to say things that you felt this thing is quenching this atmosphere that has been created. Have you had that experience before? The reason that happened is because the person that came up after the prayer session does not have skill. Are you there? Because prayer is also an heart, you will need to develop skill in that thing you are doing. Now, as I'm talking now, the Lord is asking me to go back. He said, go back, go back to um, act of prayer. So let's leave this. I'll come back. Let's go back to act of prayer. And when he said go back, and I saw something, I saw I saw what he wrote. He now said he wrote specific. Are you there? I think there's something God wants us to stress on that. So let's go back there. Prayer as an act. What did I say? I said the f- number one. It w- it, mean, it means that prayer is what an action. Are you there? So the one that is praying is performing what an action first. Are you there? So prayer is a verb. Are you there? Because Hmm. Prayer is because prayer is first an action. The implication that we have on the one that is praying is that it, it will require, if not all of you, most of you. There is no action that does not require a part of the person acting, not one. Are you there? Please pay attention to this teaching. Prayer as an act, number one, shows that first, you must understand that prayer is an action. Abi, prayer is a verb. And anytime you are engaging in prayer, you are performing an action. And in that action, you must understand that this thing I'm doing will, will need, if not all of me, uh-huh, a major part of me. 
Are you there? Because every action will require a large part of the person performing it. So when you are praying, God expects, if not all of you, all of you, if not all of you, I mean, most of, you know, it's even all of you. Are you there? To be involved in that thing. Your entire being must be immersed into that thing you are doing because it's an action. Any action that you are performing and is not affecting your being, are you with me? Cannot be gainful. You can't make the most of it when you don't give your all to it. Are you there? You cannot make the most of an action that you don't give your all to. So if prayer is an act, and firstly it involves an action, then God expects you to give your all to it. Are you there? See, when I say give your all, the all I'm using here may be, may be that God will want you to give a greater percentage of yourself to what? To that act. So it is asking you to give a greater percentage of yourself to that act. The question is, the remaining small percentage will be for what? Are you with me? Hmm. Let me give you an example. If you start praying now, if we begin to pray, if you begin to pray and pray and pray and pray, maybe suddenly somebody just collapsed. And all of us, we are, we are praying. What is the right thing to do? Hmm? What's the right thing to do? I need the response from here and one from here. What's the right thing to do? We are praying and praying and somebody just Collapse. What should we do? Yes? Huh? To take care of that person first. Okay, one. Yes? I need one from this one. Yes. No, he just collapsed. We did not lay hands, so he just collapsed. They're just praying and the person just went off. What should we do? We should attend to it. Praise the Lord. So the, the remaining little percentage, are you there? Will now be your consciousness of the environment where the prayer is ongoing. Your awareness of that place. There are times that God takes all of the person praying as he begins to engage in that act. There are times that God takes most and leaves a part. When it takes most and leaves a part, it means there's something in that environment that you need to pay attention to. So for that, our beloved brother, is, I'm just citing an example. If somebody now collapses, we need to, are you there? Pay attention to that person. Whether to pray for the person or to give some medications. Are you with me? So that we will not begin to practice a, a kind of spirituality that lacks value. Do you know it's possible? Huh? When you become too spiritual, you will be practicing a kind of spirituality that lacks value. And a spirituality that, that lacks value cannot profit humanity. Cannot profit what? Yes. When you see churches building hospitals for people to come free health care, they are, what are they trying to do? A spirituality that has what? Value. That's why it can profit humanity. So any spirituality that lacks value will never profit humanity. Are you there? Number two, prayer as an act now shows that anytime you are engaging in prayers, you must know that, for example, if you are in drama, there are scripts, right? There are scripts. Are you there? So, those that will be given the script, they are expected to come and do what? To come and act what? The script. Are you there? 
The day God established prayer, he wrote the script for prayers. So if you are now going to pray, you must now understand that this thing I want to do is not anyhow. It has to be according to the script. What I'm trying to say is there's what we call prayer script. The Bible says the people pray and they do not receive because they pray amiss. So praying out of the script of prayer is praying amiss. That's why you can pray anywhere, you can pray anytime, but you are not expected to pray anyhow because you'll be praying amiss. If there is anything you will need to note, you must note that one, prayer is supposed to be done to specific because you are acting in script. This I'm saying now, you might have not heard it before, but that's just the word of the Lord to you. So when we begin to engage in prayers, we must do it with the consciousness that there's a script I want to act now. And it, it must be according to the script for this act to be acceptable before the Lord. Because the one you are praying to is the writer of the script. And it will not acknowledge any act that is not in the script for that action. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? For example, what you are praying about will not gain acceptance before the Lord just because you are saying good things. Good words is not what God accepts. What God accepts is right words. A, a statement can look good, but yet not right. Let me give you an example. If God tells you that he wants you to be a counselor, are you there? And then you feel that if I become a counselor, how much money will I get from being a counselor? Let me become a doctor or lawyer. And you're now praying that God should make you a doctor or a lawyer or whatever. That prayer is what? You are praying what? I miss. Now, what you are praying about, is it not a good thing? It's good, but it's not right. Because that was not written in that script. So you are acting something that is not in the written script. Are you there? So I told you something when I was starting this teaching. I said, prayer is an act. And prayer is what? An heart. So there is act of prayers. And there is what? Heart of prayers. There is A-C-T of prayers and there is A-R-T of prayers. Now let's go to A-R-T of prayers. In heart of prayers, we are going to look at skill and craft. So prayers involve skills and prayer also involves craft. You can craft it. Just like craftsmen. So prayer men are actually craftsmen. And I will show you how. I'm just trying to lay a foundation. I have not started. Well, when I start this teaching, we'll go to the scriptures. Are you with me? On that heart of prayers, there is skill. You cannot say that you are a prayer man until you have, until you develop what? Skill in prayers. The skill you will develop in prayers will now be resting on your relationship with who? God. That intimacy you have built be, by the reason of your consistency in that act is what produces skill in the act. So you cannot have skill in an act that you are not consistent in. So there are many people that pray, but only if you have skills in prayers. And I'm going to share... See, oh my God. See, if you understand this truth, you'll be wise. I'm going to show you how men that have skills in prayer, how they act. When you, when you, have, when you develop prayer skills, you understand atmospheres. You understand the language of atmospheres. Because when you begin to pray, you create an atmosphere. And that atmosphere that you create on the strength of your prayers, only a man that is skillful in that act, we understand. 
So there are times that after prayers, they will ask you to come and preach. And when you get there, because you are skillful, you you discern, you continue praying. Huh? I get what I'm saying. Okay, let's make it more real. How many of you have been to a program before? And the prayer was going, and they prayed and prayed. And you, the next person that came, you feel this person quenched this atmosphere. How many of you have been to such program? Now, the reason the person acted that way is not his fault. Huh? But the person that quenched that atmosphere lacks what? Skill. And because he lacks skill, he cannot interpret the atmosphere that the prayer has created. There are times that after pray, after a prayer session and you are coming up next, the next thing to do is to make an altar call. Because that atmosphere must have created something in the heart of men. They want to receive Jesus. So if you now can say, Hallelujah. Well, you see, the way Nigeria is not going like this, God will help us. So you are a wicked man. You are a wicked man. You are a wicked man. You see, your lack of skill, eh? you see, when you begin to walk with God and you understand some things about God, you will serve Him fearfully. You, you will serve Him fearfully. Because your lack of skill, if you continue in that state where you are unskilled and you are praying, yet you are unskilled. The judgment you receive in time to come is the judgment of the judgment of a wicked man. Because many times you will quench the flow of the spirit. There are times that after praying, when you come up, then what you are supposed to do is to raise a song. Just to align with. Are you getting what I'm saying? What I'm trying to say in essence is this. Under hearts, A-R-T, of prayers, there is skill. But you cannot develop prayer skills until you are consistent in praying. So a man that, that is skillful in prayers knows when God comes. He knows. He knows. Are you there? He knows. He knows. He can tell you that, okay, ah, Okay, okay, God, okay, okay. Um, let's continue this prayer. Okay, I actually wanted us to pray for 10 minutes before, but now that this prayer we have done and we have touched something, let's continue the prayer. Let's continue, let's continue. That one has skills. He has skills. Many of us do not know that when we come into God's presence, God has order for that service. You make your own order, but be flexible to work with his own word, order. Are you with me? So, developing prayer skills is resting on what? Your consistency in praying. So, when you begin to develop prayer skills, many things will happen to you. That's when you can even enjoy prayers. When you are skilled, when you are skillful. This skill now is not edge. It's not edge. It's maturity based. As I'm teaching, if you have questions, please note them. I will take questions after now. The skill is not head. It's what? Maturity based. When you are skillful in praying, you know what to pray to address certain situations. Take for instance. Okay, okay, okay. Let me give you a test now. Test. Open test. Two, two, I will allow two people to answer from here. I will allow two people to answer from here. I want to test your skill. If you have prayer skills. See, when you, are, when you are skillful in prayers, you know what to say to God at certain situations. Are you there? There are some situations that will, require a, that will require that you address God in a certain way. Yes. There are times to come before him with thanksgiving. You want to say something to the Lord, start with singing first. Begin to call him his names. There are times like that. But if you are not skillful, you just say, Father, you are going straight to the point. You will miss. Go straight to the point. You now make you miss the point. Let me ask us this question. You, you were invited as a minister to pray for a man. And then, this man had done a lot of evil. As a matter of fact, a lot of people, he had done a lot of evil. He can't even, he can't count it. And now he's sick, terribly sick, 
and about to die. So you were invited to pray for that man. Meanwhile, it is clear that the man is guilty. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you there? As a minister, you are invited to pray for the healing of the man. How will you pray? Tell me. Okay, don't worry. Let me have. Let me spare you so that you will not faint. Zion, you stand. And then, um, Anaitet, stand. Yes. What will you say? Please? Give them the mic, please. Give them the mic. Christ, Lord, please. Get a mic. You stay with the camera. You get the mic. Don't worry. The mic is with him. Give her the mic. Let everybody hear. At least those that are watching online, they know what you want to say. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Is the mic on? All right, yes. Put it close. Let's hear you. What will you say? The man has done a lot of terrible things and now is shocked. That's like Nemesis. So he's about to die and you are, they called you to pray for his healing. Of course, God can heal him. So you want to pray for the healing of the man. Now, start. What will you do? You pray for him. How? Put the mic close to your mouth. Please, uh, Minister Tosin, please help us. Please, please. Because I don't understand what she's doing. Help us, please. Yes? No, no, no. You. Answer. Please keep standing. No, don't sit. Keep standing. Yes? Okay. So after okay. That, after he, that, yes. The word of God. Yes. So, um, he, he okay. He's a Christian. He just likes to do bad things. Then have you pray for him? You will pray for him. Yes. All right. Thank you. Give it to Annette. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, you, you have, this rule now, you have passed the test, you have passed the test. Meanwhile, you have tried, you help your rule, not like the, eh? you have tried. When you want to pray for a person that is obviously wrong, is guilty of that thing, are you there? You don't come and say, ye foul spirits. What are you waiting for? In the name, that it, nothing we have. Nothing. Nothing. There, there are captives. There are two types of captives. There, there are lawful captives. There are unlawful captives. Are you there? All these things, you will not know it until you develop prayer skills. Are you there? A lawful captive is the one that came into captivity because of what he did wrong. Are you there? So, if she committed abortion, and because of the abortion now, her womb was damaged. Now she's married. She's not trusting God for a child. You don't say, the devil, I know you are a thief. Wherever you are sent now, <laughs> nothing will happen. But there are unlawful captives. These are people that they have not done anything wrong. The devil is just afflicting them. When you, when you are meeting with unlawful captives, make declarations. But when you are meeting with lawful captives, those who have done something wrong and they are only reaping the reward of that thing they did wrong. It's mercy. Are you with me? But you won't know until you have what? Prayer what? Skills. There are many other things. to inter Are you there? Please sit. Are you with me? So your prayer skills will now help you to know how to address situations. You will know what to say. In various what situations, there are people that before you pray for them, you must first lead them to Christ, because they don't have Christ. That skill, you don't just get to a place and begin to declare. Are you there? Declare it. Look at this. When you meet with somebody who is a who is a lawful captive, are you there? You don't make declaration first. Are you there? First. Um, make the person become an unlawful captive. Are you there? By leading the person through the process of forgiveness of sins, are you getting what I'm saying? Where he or she receives Jesus, are you there? Where he or she feels, now sees that he, he is wrong, are you there? 
after that point, then you cannot what? Huh? You cannot make declarations to work. Mercy first before you begin to declare. You won't know that until you develop what? Prayer skills. And prayer skills will come on the strength of your consistency in that act. For example, if a demon is tormenting a person, are you there? A demon is coming to molest the person. Are you with me? And the person tells you, a demon is coming to molest me. How? How often? Every time, every time. There are two things that is responsible for that. That's why, you see, before you pray for people, interrogate them. Well, you will not just be fetching water in a basket. You will not be pouring water in a basket. Interrogate them. Okay. And then be discerning. Are you, are you with me? If, because a demon can begin to molest the person on a legal ground. Are you there? If that thing is happening on the legal ground, first take away the legality. When you take away the legality, then you can now make your declarations. But if you don't take away the legality, your declarations will not work. Are you with me? The second part of prayer as an heart is crafting. So there's a, there's, there's, you can craft it. Just like craftsmen. Craftsmen are prayer men. You can what? Craft it. In crafting prayers, your strength will be needed because it will take, it will involve the use of energy. Both your spiritual energy and your what? And your physical. I, I, have you had this feeling before that when you, after you finish praying, you suddenly feel very tired and very weak. Has it happened to you before? Huh? The reason you felt tired and weak is not because the devil has attacked you. It's just because that thing is a craft. So it will suck you. It will suck your energy. That's the crafting. It shows that that thing is an heart. Are you there? Okay. When the person has Um, you came for a program and you have a friend close to you who had, who had eaten at home. Eating and eating. As a matter of fact, he ate pandemia. And he took like three wraps to the glory of God. And he came for a prayer meeting. And you, you have not eaten. And the person got to prayer meeting and said, Ah, you come back. And he was doing a lot of time. He can turn like this. I said, God! And you, you are judging yourself. And say, Lord, when will I grow? Oh God. <laughs> he was able to do those crafts. <laughs> because certain things as... I get what I'm saying. Because prayer is a craft. Involves, because prayer involves crafting. One, for you to engage in it properly, you will need to Take care of your spiritual health and your physical health. So what am I trying to say? A sick man eh, will not pray well because prayer involves crafting. This thing I'm teaching you now. Are you bearing, is there a witness in your spirit that they are the truth of God? Hmm? So if the devil is bringing sickness to you, it's more than just saying that to him. He may, be, he may be doing that so that he can attack your prayer life. So because prayer involves crafting, you have to be physically fit and also spiritually what? Fit. When we say prayer to pray, you need the energy of a spirit. It's, a, it's true. But your physical energy is also important because the spirit will possess your body. And that body must be whole, must be healthy. Are you with me? You have questions? Keep noting them. Now let's go to now. Now we want to start the teaching now. Luke 11. Luke 11. From verse 1. Yes. 
Luke 11 from verse 1. Luke 11 from verse 1. Yes? Yes? Luke 11 from verse 1. And it came to pass. Come again. And it came to pass, yes? And it came to pass as he was playing, praying in a certain place. Yes. When he ceased, one of the, his disciples said unto him. Now look at this. And it came to pass, yes? When he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also Start from the him. beginning. And it came to pass. That as he was praying in a certain place. As he was praying in a certain place, yes? When he ceased. When he stopped the prayers. One of his disciples. Are you there? When he what? When he stopped the prayers. The first thing to note about prayer is this one. Prayer is more private than public. Are you there? Prayer man is not known in the public. Prayer men, true prayer men are known in the secret. Don't do in the open the things that you are not doing in the secret. You will be fake. Anything you are not doing secretly and you try to do in the open, it will not be powerful. To be powerful enough to change the nation, no. It will be powerful enough to change the nation. Anything you do in the secrets and you bring to the open, it will be powerful enough to change the nation. So prayer is more what? Private than what? Public. Two, prayer involves intimacy. Are you there? And this intimacy can demand isolation. Are you there? This intimacy can what? Demand what? Isolation. Prayer involves intimacy, and this intimacy can what? Demand isolation. Are we together? Hmm. You discover that Jesus was praying in a certain place, and the Bible says when he ceased, that means when he stopped what? The prayer. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you with me? Another thing to notice this, if you truly want to pray, avoid interruptions. Are you there? If you truly want to pray, avoid what? Interruptions. They did not come to him while he was praying. The Bible says when he ceased, meaning when he stopped praying, the disciples what? Came to him. Are we together? Are we together? Take note of that. So when he ceased praying, yes, continue. One of his disciples said unto him, Yes. Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, uh uh-huh. Teach us Teach, to pray. Do you know why they came to ask him this question? Number one, the first reason is that anytime Jesus wants to pray, he will go alone. In most cases, he will what? Go alone. And isol- he will isolate himself. They will know that, okay, a guy is going to pray. But he will, he will just leave them and he will go alone. Are you there? So, this day, one of the disciples now came to him, yes? Teach us to pray. Yes. As John also taught his disciples. Praise the Lord. Look at this. It happened to be that uh, put up the mic. Praise the Lord. It happens to be that the disciples of John they pray often. They fast often. But the disciples of Jesus, they look like a canal man. You see, if Jesus was in our time, 